the Gemini Stitcher and welcome to my sewing space. This is another Monday Makes and Plans and this week there is a win, a fail and a no-show in that order. So we'll hit the ground running and start with the win. The win is that I have finally and I mean, finally, after about four years of procrastinating about it, actually made myself a sewing mat stroke workstation. It's behind me, so I'll just whiz out of the way. There it is. It's a very large mat that fits three quarters of my table. And then it's got two of these panels either side for me to put everything that I need when I'm sewing into them. Now, to make my sewing station, I've not just used wadding or batting, and I've not even used bolzel in a form or the Biani so stable, which are quite expensive in my opinion just for a workstation stroke sewing mat but batting was not going to be sturdy enough and I just want to say a big thank you to Nicola for her idea of what to use she was at one of our she goes to our sewing socials regularly she's an amazing quilter and she said she puts her big sewing machine on to some old table protector and it's what you put underneath your tablecloth to protect your table table protector this is the stuff and this is what i had already that i'd used when we had an oak table so it's rubberized on one side and felted on the other so I thought, thanks Nicola, now I know what to make my workstation with. And I have done. So I kept the rubberized side on the underneath so that it stops things slipping around and used the felted side to quilt onto. So I've only quilted the top of it and then bound round the sides. And I've made this humongous mat. Some pics will be popping up now of me that Steph took the other week when we were sewing when I was wrangling with it and it was getting the better of me and she had to help me in the end to try and do the quilting because it's quite a big mat and this is quite bulky when you've got a lot of it because it's a bit stiffer than batting well a lot stiffer than batting isn't it but it's worked so if you're interested in making one of these workstations let me know and I might make another one and do a sew along for it if I can be brave enough but yeah I recommend you if you've got an old table protector that you used to use on your dining table use it for your mat under your sewing machine just as it is if you want or if you want to go posh like me then quilt and bind it as well two little workstations on the side it's really improved my sewing space. No end. I have pots of different stuff all over the place, well cluttered. Now it's all gone because they're all in these side things. Can you tell I'm chill? So that was my win this week. Let's move on to my fail. Yes, we all have them, girls. We all do things wrong. It doesn't matter how many years we've been sewing. We all make mistakes. And I made a silly mistake this week. But we'll wind back to why it happened. On Saturday, I went to the sewing social in Harrogate run by Ruth. And I will pop a link below for the details of where to book it because she's booked some more dates in now. Spaces are limited to, I think she said, 10 or 12 people. 
So limited availability. If you live near Harrogate and you fancy trying a social, go to Roos. It was great. We had a really good day. Apart from the fact that I messed up. Now, when I go to my own socials, I take something really simple, really straightforward, no thinking about, made loads of times before, and then I don't make silly errors when I'm helping other people, chatting, etc, etc. But silly me thought, this isn't my social. I'll be able to get loads done. I took two projects with me and I didn't even finish one of them. And I'll show you why. Now, this is supposed to be the pom-pom waistcoat, free download from Maison Fauve Patterns. Absolutely no fault with the pattern whatsoever. Just, let me just make that clear. It is all my fault. And I'm owning it. So I'd cut this out already and done all the markings on it. So I thought, so the back, I got up to putting the tabs on. It's all been joined together. The sides have been joined together. And then on the front, you don't have to do these four welt pockets, but I thought, no, no, I'm doing them. And individually, Looks okay that, doesn't it? And that one looks okay, doesn't it? Not bad, considering was that a sewing social, but when I hung it up, so what that one's straight and that's in the right place. This one, and you see, it's on the wonk, heading downhill. How's that happened? Not a lot I can do about that now, is there? It's all cut out, it's all sewn in. I'm either going to have to accept I've got a wonky pocket and pretend that it's not annoying the heck out of me and it was meant to be like that, not a cat and L chance of getting away with that one. Or I'm going to have to have a look in my stash and see I have got a little bit of this fabric left might just have enough to cut another front panel out and redo that one side but what a mess and if that doesn't if I haven't got that then it's just an epic fail because I can't alter it now I've even cut the damn thing why didn't I check them both before I cut into them because I wasn't thinking straight was I I was too busy enjoying myself chatting and sewing and that's what happens. So, in the naughty corner, that goes until I can be bothered to look at it again. So, I've had my win and I've had my fail. And then the third thing that I said happened this week was a no-show. Now, no-show could mean an awful lot of things, but with me, it's... It's no big deal, but, but it is. I'd got myself all excited about my new sewing machine arriving on Wednesday. And when I'd been to my quilt class on Tuesday, I was driving home on the busy motorway and my phone rang. So I ignored it. I was a good girl. And when I got home, I had a look who it was and returned the call. And it was the place that I'm getting the sewing machine from. To tell me, now my machine that I'm getting is a pre-loved one. And I knew that the day before they DPD'd it to me, they were going to do a full machine check. It had already been checked by one engineer and then it gets checked by a different engineer before they let it out the building. And he, and he failed it on one of the parts. I couldn't really understand what they were talking about because pff, mechanical, electronic stuff, switch it on and it works, that's me. But clearly he said that it was to do with the stitch auto stitch length adjuster thingy and every God knows how many hundred stitches it was slightly out so they wouldn't pass it, which is, is good. It's good. 
and he, and he did say, I probably would never have noticed it, but they will not let it go. I was all right with that until he then proceeded to tell me it's a faff machine and they've got to order the part from Germany and it'll take a week to arrive. Then I weren't a happy bunny. So we had an interesting conversation and they are compensating me with a full three year warranty instead of one year warranty and a load of goodies as well for my new embroidery at part of the machine that I'd have had to buy anyway. So I'm okay. Don't sound it, do I? No, I am. I am okay. We're nearly there. So this machine is my existing brother machine. There is no nice new faff machine on my nice new workstation mat. But next week, fingers crossed, it will be here. The other thing I've done, I already mentioned this week, was I went to my monthly quilt class. And I'll just grab what we made this month. Now you'll remember, at my quilt class, we've been doing foundation paper piecing on marking them out on graph, graph paper, and then transferring it onto freezer paper and using that as a template. I've been quite enjoying doing that. Went this month because Carol, who teaches us, doesn't tell us what we're doing next month till we get there. And this month, we weren't doing it with freezer paper. And I thought, oh no, I need my freezer paper. I'm not going to cope without it. <laughs> Crazy. Let me just show you what we actually did make. And I did make something. So we were doing squares and half squares and this is what I've made and I'm quite proud of it because we did it without freezer paper, drop just by drawing lines, sewing, cutting, sewing together as accurately as we could. So that's the front of it and that's the back. Not bad. Quite neat, could have been better. So that was the first one that I did. And then I actually managed to finish one within the class. Amazing. And I finished two. And I made another one. And I've made this one for my quilt. So I've got these are both made out of exactly the same fabrics, just switched around and they look so, so different. So on this one, I've got the pale colours on the inside and the two dark colours on the outside. And on this one, I've put the dark colours on the inside and the pale colours on the outside. So that's another two quilt blocks made for my sampler quilt. All in Tula pink fabrics again, because you know I love a Tula. And that's it for this month. All done. Normally we do one block in the class and then we go away and make another one on our own, but I've done mine. And I don't want any more than two like that in my sampler quilt. So I'm happy. Now the October one, I'm in Anglesey. So I'll be missing a quilt class in October. So it's going to slow my quilt making down. I did try and persuade Carol to give me the details of what we would have done in October and then I could have done it on my own. But she wouldn't let me. Fair enough, fair enough. She doesn't want me to do it wrong and then unlearn it and learn it again. So, yeah, no quilt class next month. A week in Anglesey instead. I'm sure I'll cope. I was meant to be making these trampling trousers, but it's been a stressful week this week, not in a bad way. But on a personal level, it's been a bit stressful. And when I'm stressed, I can't concentrate. And I know we do sewing to help us calm down. But I just thought making the trampling trousers, there's a lot of detail in these trousers. There you go. See, knee seams on the darts on the front, seams on the back, patch pockets. 
oh, just goes on. So I chickened out of making them. I didn't want to do them wrong because I knew I wasn't the head. I wasn't in the right headspace to be doing it. I proved that when I took the flipping waistcoat to um, Ruth's social, didn't I? Made a mess of that. So I'm glad I haven't started these. But hopefully, I'm feeling okay now. So yeah. I'm not saying I'll finish these, but I will definitely be making a start on them. Now, I normally do a monthly make some plans vlog as a separate vlog, but I've got a lot on this month, a lot of vlogs to fit in. So I'm going to do it now. We're on the 9th of September already, and I've only just written them down. So I'm trying to be good, not overface myself with projects, but just writing the ones down that I know I want to do. I've got eight projects that still need doing in September. I just thought I'd run through them with you now. The first one is the Sorby Sundra and that is part of my Busy Bee Challenge. I'm going to be making that in some lime green viscose crepe. Can't show it you because it's out blowing on the line as we speak. But that's on the list. And to go with that, I'm doing the beach cover up in the bright pink lace. And that is two garments in one, if you know what I mean. Then I've got the patina blouse that is part of my challenge to myself to use the fabric in my Think Pink box. And I let you all vote on what you thought I should make the fabric in this month and the patina blouse as one. So it will be the patina blouse, but I'm doing it with a Christine twist because, because at Ruth's social on the swaps table was this pattern. Now, it's a soul liberated pattern. I'm not keen on this really high up neck. I think it will get on my nerves. But what attracted me to it was those sleeves with the detail on and the frilly bit at the end. And I'm thinking I'll do patina blouse with those sleeves in. In my Think Pink fabric. Then... Then I've got the Precious Fabric Challenge to do and I'll be doing my vlog on that next Sunday. But I may as well tell you all, I'm going to be doing a Chanel jacket or a Chanel type jacket and it's called the Freddy jacket. I won't show you the fabric, it's Precious Fabric that I'm going to be making that jacket in. So that's four things and they've all got to be done. So then I've got four things that I'd like to do but don't have to be done this month. One of them is the trampoline trousers. The second one is the cocoon coat from So Different. And I've got some green boucle from Higgs and Higgs. Oh my goodness. I will pop a link for, the, for it down below because it is the best boucle I've ever bought. It's a felted back boucle which means it's not rough and unfinished on the inside it's just beautiful and the cocoon coat only has lining in the front panels so it's perfect with the felted interior for that. So yeah cocoon coat, watch this space. The next thing on my list is the Ilford jacket. Now, I want to do the Ilford jacket in the same fabric as the trampoline trousers. Let me just get it. This is the fabric. Now, my tromplings are already cut out. And you'll remember, if you watched last week, I said we got this, Steph and I, in Birmingham on the Rad Market, 50p a metre. And we both got two metres of it. And I said last week, why did I get two metres? I should have got four metres and then I could have made a matching Ilford jacket to go with my trampoline trousers that I'd cut out last week. And Steph, bless her cotton socks, 
came over to sew this week and brought me her fabric and said I could have it. So thanks a lot, Steph. It's the best pound present you've ever given me. So I can do the Ilford. So the Ilford is now on my September makes list as well. And then the last thing that I want to make is one of the Bionic open ones. And I'm using my two pink fabrics. I made one of these last year and gifted it as a gift to Sharon for Christmas. And she loves it. It fits so much stuff in it. And I was well gel when we went away. It was when we went to the gathering and she was unpacking and lo and behold, the open wide bag comes out and she said, it's great this bag, it it's all my makeup, all my toiletries, everything I need to bring away, all in one bag. I thought, I need one of these. Why have I not made myself one? And I've been lusting after one ever since, so now I'm on it, I've cut it out and I'm gonna get it done in September. So there my eight. What do you think? What do you think? What are my chances of getting all those done? Let's just wait and see. I have got a week in Anglesey at the end of September, so I should get quite a lot of sewing done while I'm down there. What else have I got on this month? I've got two socials to, to of my socials to organise and attend. And I think that's it, apart from the week in Anglesey, which is going to be a sewing week anyway. So fingers crossed, there's a good chance I'll get my way through the majority of those on that list. Just before I love you and leave you, I'm going to bang the drum again about my D stash. Well, it's a joint one between me and Steph. There's a lot more fabric being put on there last week, late last week, it's not been on there long. And that's it. The, that is the end of the day stash, I promise you. So if you've been hanging fire to see if anything better was coming along, it is what it is now. What's on there, there'll be very little more going on there, I would have thought, certainly not this year. So have a look at our day stash, I'll put the link below. And I've pulled out five of my fave fabrics to show you as well. The colour of that. Oh, can you see the rib? It's a ribbed, silky feel, jersey fabric. Quite thick, really good quality. There's it's 150 wide and there's two meters of this so oh, if nobody buys this i might buy it because this is one of steph's and as soon as she brought it out of her bag when she came on wednesday my eyes went like saucers two meters that would make an amazing winter dress wouldn't it it really would so that's on there if you don't want me to snaffle it go and have a look now I, now, I don't usually go for grey, but this is a really nice soft grey and it's got white abstract dots all over it. It's a cotton jersey, so it's got a decent amount of stretch, but quite structured. And yeah, I think that would make an amazing lounge suit for swishing around in in the autumn. Fabric number three, it's been on there a while this and I thought this would have been one that when it is a, it's from Fabric Godmother and it's a quilted double gauze, perfect for an autumn jacket. It's my fabric and I just don't like the colour on me. So that's the only reason I'm getting rid of it. How much of it is there? There's 1.8 metres, so there's more than enough for making, say, the Helen's Closet Wildwood would look great in it. And you could make the long line gilet if you wanted in that. It is 150 wide. So that's fabric choice number three. Number four is this, and if you had feel a vision, you'd understand why I'm, I'm, I'm stroking it like now. It's a suede effect fabric. 
and to, oh it just feels absolutely beautiful there's a lot of it it's very heavy let's see there's a whopping four meters of this and it's 150 wide so you could make so you could maybe make it'd be a good ilford jacket wouldn't it definitely make a fantastic jacket you could make a long line jacket there's four meters of it or what about a suede looking button down skirt you know the denim ones that are all the rage you could make it in this with a matching jacket a matching little bomber jacket the dandelion jacket that i've just made from maison faux would look good in this if it's your color so have a look at that one and then last but not least i don't know why i'm showing this because i want it really but i'm trying not to buy fabric this is some that steph brought around it's a soft shell fabric so soft shell is semi waterproof on one side and then felted on the inside now you remember i made the andy's jacket from itch to stitch in soft shell it's that pattern is specifically for soft shell fabric and if nobody buys this i might make another one of those it's steph's fabric so i'll have to buy it which i'm not meant to be doing but look at that how much of it is there so there's 2.2 meters of this so there's more than enough to make the andy's jacket or another walking type jacket one that you want to keep drying and let's face it with all the rain we have in the uk it's gonna get worn isn't it there we go i've reached the end phew what am i planning next week i'm going to make the trampoline trousers i'm keeping my fingers and toes crossed that my sewing machine will turn up and i'm also hoping to make the biani open wide bag as well maybe i'm being a bit ambitious and i might just get one of those two things done but they are definitely the two off my list that are on my radar for this week so i hope you all have a wonderful sewing week i hope you're having better weather than we are in lancashire it's taking another turn for the worst after a day of 29 degree heat we were all stifling and then the next day it's dropped down to about 16 degrees again and I'm back in jumpers. What can a girl do? At least I'm wearing bright, I'm dopamine dressing today. I'm not letting the rotten weather let me get me down and I hope you don't too. If you're looking outside at a grey sky, just go and do some sewing and you'll feel better. I love you all loads. See you soon. Bye for now and thanks for watching.